bringing you analysis and insight into the Crimson Tide. Your Crimson cover hosts, John Copeland, Mike Parker, and Chase Goodbread, sponsored by Burnham Hahn. And now, Crimson Cover. Welcome in to Crimson Cover Television on WVUA 23. I'm Chase Goodbread of NFL.com. I'm joined, as always, by big John Copeland to my right, former Alabama All-American defensive end, and, of course, Mike Parker, our senior recruiting analyst to my left. Lots to get into here on this early October edition of Crimson Cover, starting, of course, with Alabama's dispatching of Louisiana last week, another route for the Crimson Tide. We're going to hear a little bit of audio from Tua Tungavaloa, who hadn't really talked all season long to reporters, not since fan day, I don't think, and also uh, some interesting comments from Nick Saban about the student section and uh, how many empty seats were there against Louisiana. Also going to be talking, of course, about Alabama's next opponent, the Arkansas Razorbacks. That'll be a road game. We'll touch on that. The coaching salaries are out. USA Today brings those every single year. Some interesting stuff there. The picks contest, plenty more. But we'll start with Alabama's home win over Louisiana. The final score, 56 to 14. And really, it looked no different than any of Alabama's wins have looked this year. John, Alabama's played Louisville. They played a couple of non-conference teams that people would expect them to hammer. Uh, they, they played, a, you know, an SEC play as well. But they've beaten all these teams, for the most part, in the same resounding way. Yes. They, 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 they're almost halfway through the year and haven't played anything close to a close game. And the thing is, though, it's something that, as an Alabama fan, we're not used to seeing our offense being as explosive as they are. Especially you know, in the passing game. No question about that. You know, we're, we're, we're used to those. Even sometimes when we play those non-conference games, uh, people didn't start to leave to probably after the third quarter as opposed to halftime because it was a grounded out kind of game. Not so much anymore. This is an extremely explosive offense. They can put the ball downfield, and they can score extremely quick. Gene Stallings knew how to keep them on their toes, didn't they? Hey, Gene, no, Stall they. Gene Stallings <laughs> kept the, the stand filled. He kept the stand filled <laughs> until the end of the game. He was going to be up 10-3 to 3 in the fourth quarter. It didn't matter who he was playing, and you were going to be there. They should have gave Gene Stallings some of their concession money because <laughs> they were still selling in concession in the fourth quarter when Gene was coaching. Mike, to a tongue of a low on third down, we've talked about how effective he's been on third down this season through five games now. Now 18 of 21 for 392 yards, seven touchdowns, no picks. That's a touchdown every three throws on third down. Not three completions, three throws. It's just incredible. It's like we're, we're having to say the same thing every week, but, I mean, what do you want me to say? I mean, it's incredible. I've never seen anything like it. Um, I know Kyler Murray is putting up huge numbers at Oklahoma, and he looks really good too, but uh, two is the best player in the country right now. He's by far the best player in my opinion, but he don't have the best numbers. No, which, he doesn't which, have which the is, best which numbers. Is, Probably, and you know, I hate to agree with Good Bread, but the more I look at this thing and looking at the numbers of some of the other quarterbacks, it's going to be hard for him to win a Hasman uh -uh. if he can't if he can't put up the he numbers. He threw eight passes last week. Yeah, he yeah. may only throw twelve this week. Yeah, I mean, if that's going to be how it's going to roll every week after week I after still, week, I, he's only thrown eighty-eight passes all year. Okay, well, 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 Vegas, we, Vegas has him as the favorite right fine. now. Well, can and we they know agree what on this? About. Can they we do. agree on this? He, he is the best player in the country. He is the best player in the country. He is the, the best country. football player in the country, five, yeah. Five games through, he is hands down the best player. I yes. don't disagree with that at all. Yes. Uh, he is phenomenal talent. Here's what he had to say this week. He spoke to reporters for the first time all season. Quarterback Tua Tungavaloa right here. The first um, game where Coach named me as a starter, where I think it was after the Louisville game, um, Jalen's usually in the front of me before our flex lines, um, you know, and Jalen told me to come in the front, like, bro, you know, you got it. This is this is your team, you know, you can go in the front, you know, and I told him, no, like, that's that's you, you know, and to have someone like Jalen stick, stick within it, you know, with knowing that, you know, I've been the starter here for two years, you know, and to have someone come in the front of me now, um, the kind of character that he has, you know, and the kind of maturity that he's shown throughout um, the year within our team this year, um, I think that's something special. You know, we hear things going around um, with, you know, other quarterbacks and whatnot. 
but to have Jalen still stick with it um, truly tells um, how he was raised as a, as a person um, and kind of testifies to his family as well. John, we've said it time and time again, Jalen Hurts just exhibit, he exudes class in just about everything he says, everything he does. This guy knows how to endear himself to a locker room. He's genuine through and through. Here he is telling Tua, hey, you beat me out, you step in front of me in the, in the flex lines in <laughs> hey, practice. Man, uh, looking at that, kind of, it, 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 it touched my heart. Kind of, I, I almost cried listening to that because I totally understand this young man and living in today's age, in the world, the society we're living in with our young people, you don't see that. This young man has something to him. His family has something to them. And not only that, though, Tour also has something to him because he understands and he saw the character in this young man and what he did for him. We don't, I'm a coach. A lot of that is not going on in our society today. That is something to grab hold to and, and be extremely proud of. Both of these young men are stepping up and showing more class than I've seen from kids that age in a long time. All right, we've got to jump to a final topic here in our first segment. Nick Saban getting after the students a little bit this week for the empty seats, Mike Parker. A little, a little, uh, a little bit. Yeah, a lot. Uh, against Louisville. Lit them up. Not many students showed up, although there were plenty of empty seats in the upper deck, too. So it wasn't just the students who didn't pack it out. You're right. your, your thoughts on uh, the, the, the student tickets and how they should be handled? They're spoiled. Are you kidding me? They're spoiled. No, I want to say that. Man, they okay, are okay. spoiled but, rotten. But, but the thing is, though, Parker. Uh, don't I mean, give me this. It's hot outside. No, it's human nature. If you in, if you're anywhere in this boat, just think about this. How Not many times? How many times you think Nick Saban have flipped through the channels, saw a game that he thought would be a good game, end up being an extremely boring game because it was a blowout, and he flipped the channel to another game. Nick Saban never has time to watch. Any well, game sure he does. Games. No, he does. <laughs> sure he does. No, he does. He does it himself. These fans are as spoiled as I've ever seen. Spoiled. They used to, he is spoiled. Right. How's that spoiled? They played in Louisiana. It was a blowout. Who's so? going to sit around for that? Uh, you're supposed to sit around for it. Now you don't have to, you don't have to sit Get around for the here. fourth. No, no, no. You're nuts. Get out of here. Hey, you used to be a player. Get out of here. They sat around and, and watched as a your player, chunky I, butt. Yeah, because they had no choice. We can't be interesting. I wonder if they shouldn't just get rid of the split packages and let all the games be first come, first serve. Because what they're doing right now would give them students. It's not like every single student has a chance to go to every single game. That ain't how it works. They got split ticket packages yeah. where if you're well, a student, you get half the home games in your ticket package, and you get the other half of the home games in your ticket package. I did not know that. If you throw that's, the, that's terrible. If you throw I, the thing wide open to everybody, maybe more people are there. I agree. I, don't, I mean, I don't. I, I understand where Nick is coming from. I understand as a coach you want the seats and you want the butts in the seats. I understand that. But let's use a little bit of common sense. Ain't nobody going to sit there and watch anything that I think is extremely boring to them. You're either going to flip the channel or you're going to get up and leave. They that's used just to human it. nature. They used to do it. That's just human nature. Uh, uh, it's, it's human nature evolving into a bunch of lazy people. No, nah, I wouldn't yeah. say that. We no are past that. time to get to a break here on Crimson Cover. It's been wild so far. I'm sure it'll get a little more nuts when we come back. For our second segment, stay with us. It's WVUA 23 Crimson Cover. <laughs> 